Good morning guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to another one of my Future Fight Vanguard videos. Today, or I guess I shouldn't say today, because we already did some videos today. Um, but right now, we are going to get done with the very last video of uh, GBT11. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty impressed. Uh, in nearly two days, we finished all of GBT11. There's a lot of decks in there, like seven or eight or something like that. All the hours I had to play area. <laughs> but um, yeah, today we're going to be talking about the Demiurg Zodiac Time Beast deck. It is the last deck that I'm going to showcase from my Future Fight series as far as concerns um, GBT11. So yeah, um, I don't think I have anything else to say besides that. So with that being said, let's get right into it. And boom. All right, so for those of you who don't know what this deck is, because it's not very much so like the other decks where it just has a strider and then a mechanic that it works around, um, the whole point of this deck is to use this card, Demiurg. Uh, Demiurg is a card that came out in the Gears of Fate set, if you guys remember that. It was a purely Gear Chronicle set, was going on uh, during the time that Chrono was fighting Ryuzu in the anime, for those of you who watched the anime, um, and it was the boss card back then. And we couldn't really find a consistent way to get to it or use it. Uh, the way that the anime made it look was kind of inconsistent. You never really got to it that way. And um, now they've actually made a full deck kind of like just around it. Like a lot more Zodiac so Time Beasts have come out. So that's definitely helped a lot with it. But they've also come out with these Gear Colossus Grade 3s and Gear Colossus support cards that um, allow for Demir to be used a little easier. So yeah, with that being said, let's get right into the deck. So starting with our grade threes, uh, we have our new grade three from the Fighters Collection, uh, Pulsar Drastic Colossus. So what Drastic Colossus does, it is a Gear Colossus and a Zodiac Time Beast. That is very important to keep track of or keep mind of in your head. Um, it has two abilities. Uh, the first one is when this unit is placed on the Vanguard Circle, you can discard a card from your hand. If you do, you reveal the top three cards of your deck. Um, and then you choose two Gear Colossus or Zodiac Time Beast cards from among them. You put one of those cards into your hand, one of those cards into your Bind Zone, and the other uh, card into your Drop Zone. So it's very, very good because it allows you to discard a card for basically a, I call it a plus one since... Uh, Every card in your bind zone in this deck is one closer card to Demiurg, which is your kind of like win condition, uh, your lasting win condition. So it's a very, very good card. Um, and then also it has an on stride skill that says when your G unit strides, you may draw a card. If you do, um, you may choose a card from your hand, bind it, and then your Vanguard gets 1000 power for every face up card in your bind zone. Now this is super, super good for Demiurg because Demiurg has Guard Restrict and Guard Restrict is always paired with what? Big Power. Um, so it is able to give uh, Demiurg big power by using Drastic Colossus' on stride skill. So the turn that you will be using Demiurg, you will have at least 12 cards in your bind zone. Therefore, Demiurg will be getting at least 12,000 power. So it's very, very good. Um, our backup grade three is Prosepia Idea Drone. Um, what Prosepia does is it has two abilities. It is just a Gear Colossus, so that is important to keep track of. If you guys bind this card, um, keep in mind that it's not a Zodiac Time Beast, so it's not leaving the bind zone. Um, and then also, uh, talking about its abilities, it has a Generation Break 2 ability that says Soul Blast 1 and choose one of your Grade 2 or less Guardians and bind it face up. When your unit's put into the guard circle during the battle that your opponent's vanguard attacks, you can pay the cost, and this unit gets plus 15k power. So basically when your opponent's vanguard attacks you, you can play like a, um, a grade 2 or less guardian to your guard circle, and then you can use this GB2 to soul blast one, and choose that card and bind it, so you can add to your bind zone, and then your vanguard will get plus 15,000 power to end the battle, so it will essentially be like you just used a basic G guardian for 15k shield. It can really come in handy when you're guarding with stuff like draw triggers and you can just make a draw trigger become a 15k shield. Um, it's really a ability that I only use if I don't have a PG in my hand, however, um, and most of the time you do in this deck because of how the PG works. Um, but it is a backup defensive skill. It's not that bad at all. Um, then it has a generation break wound ability that says at the end of your turn, if this unit's on the Vanguard circle, 
Um, you can choose, or you can counter boss one, choose a card from your drop zone and bind it. And then if you do, you soul charge one, uh, which fuels the earlier skill and also some other skills. Uh, and then you can choose one of your rear guards and bind it face up. If you bind a card, then your opponent has to choose one of their rear guards and puts it on the bottom. So control your opponent just a little bit. Um, it is kind of sucky that they get to choose because they can just fill up their board really nicely. And then if you use the skill, they can put back a trigger or something on their field back to the bottom. So that's not really ideal, but um, it is not our idea ride. Ideal ride. I'm looking at the word idea and I want to say idea so bad, but yeah, it's not our ideal ride. Um, so be sure to just ride Jurassic Colossus whenever you can. It's a way better ride. Um, moving into how the deck works. So since Demiurg needs 12 different Zodiac Time Beasts um, to use its skill in the Bind Zone, we run a bunch of different little Zodiac Time Beasts and you guys will see that. And that's why we run like two ofs or three ofs of everything. Uh, it is a lot different than other builds where you just run four of a really good card, four of a really good card, and then like three of a really good card to round out the grade two lineup or the grade one lineup. Uh, so you guys will see that here shortly. So we uh, first we run two Pulsar Tamer Manish. Um, it is a Zodiac Time Beast card that has two abilities. The first one is that on the rear guard or guard circle, if you have a Zodiac Time Beast Vanguard, this unit gets resist on the guard circle and the rear guard circle. So it can be very good um, against things like uh, Kagero, uh, Night Rose, Gear Chronicle, Narkami. So it can't be sniped by those abilities. So if you're able to just play two Manishes on the board, uh, then you can attack your opponent safely without having to worry about the um, bad things that come with fighting control. Um, then its second ability is Generation Break 1. When this unit attacks, you may have this unit get 2,000 power for each of your other Zodiac Time Beast units. If you do, until the end of the battle, bind this unit face up. So this card, just by attacking, you can choose to activate its skill. It gains power for free, and then it binds itself just for you, so that you can have it in the bind zone ready to be uh, used as Demir Fodder, as we shall call it. Um, then we run two Pulsar Valve Laser Dragon. This is another card that came out in GBT 11. Uh, it is actually an 11k grade 2, which we don't see those very often, but they are very powerful. Of course, the it always has to come with kind of like a contingency plan or some kind of requirement for you to use it because 11k grade 2 is very powerful. Um, but the requirement for this is actually not that much of a requirement at all, at least in this deck. Uh, and the requirement is it has a continuous skill that says if the number of cards in your bind zone is one or less, this card cannot attack a vanguard. So regardless, if you haven't even bound any cards, you can still attack rear guard with this. Um, so if your opponent just plays rear guards on grade one and rushes you, if you don't have any bind zone units but you want to ride this card, go ahead and ride it and attack your opponent's rear guard. No harm, no foul. Um, so then it has an act skill that activates in the bind zone. You can counter boss one and soul boss one during your main phase, and then you can call this card a rear guard circle. And if your vanguard is a zodiac time beast, you can bind the top card of your deck, uh, replacing its bind spot in your bind zone. Uh, then we have two Lugo Ur. Um, so Lugo Ur is one of our cards from GBT08, I believe. Um, it is a zodiac time beast as well, just like the rest, and it has two abilities. The first one says when this unit attacks, if you have a zodiac time beast vanguard, this unit gets plus 2,000 power until the end of the battle. So most of the time you'll have a Zodiac Time Beast Vanguard, so it will get 2,000 power. And then it has a Time Leap ability that says Generation Break 1, when your drive check reveals a Greed 3 Zodiac Time Beast. So basically when we, whenever we check Drastic Colossus as our drive check in this deck, we can Soul Blast 1 and Time Leap this unit. Um, it can be useful to get extra attacks through um, if you drive check a Drastic Colossus. Uh, so it's not bad at all. Even though we don't really have grade threes in this deck that we would want to time leap into, because they don't have any like rear guard effects or anything like that, but it does allow for an extra attack if you see that your opponent is still at 11k and hopefully they don't check a trigger uh, at the end of that attack that you're attacking them. Or if they attacked and they guarded it, then you know that they're not going to check a trigger because there's no damage check to be done. So you can just time leap and attack safely. Then we have four Pulsar Rewind Tiger. This is another one of our new GBT-11 cards and another Zodiac Time Beast. Um, it says when it's placed on the rear guard circle, you can counter boss one and choose another Zodiac Time Beast rear guard and rest it. Usually in that case, this is going to be our starter that we rest doing that. 
and then we combine the top card of our deck, and if that card is the Zodiac Time Beast, we draw a card, and this card gives 2,000 power. So on the early turns, it is a 10k attacker uh, after you use the skill, which can be very good. Even if your opponent rides a 10k, you can still hit them. So it's a very, very solid card. Then we run one of our 10k Vanilla and Gear Chronicle, that is the Zodiac Time Beast, uh, which is Chrono Spin Serpent. So we only run one of it because, of course, uh, we have, number one, we have a Valve Laser Dragon to ride as a higher base power, so that's why we're not running more 10k Vanillas. Because usually the reason for running 10k Vanillas is to have a consistent number of them to ride a higher power Vanguard so that your opponent can't rush you. Um, so we're only running one because it makes good numbers with the other cards and also it's just a one of Zodiac Time Beast that if we happen to bind it or if we have the opportunity to bind it, we can and it will help our Demiurg stack. Um, moving on, we have our grade ones. We have four of the new Stride Fodder for just Zodiac Time Beast. So we have a Zodiac Time Beast uh, Stride Fodder. It is Zodiac Time Beast itself. Um, and then it can search out Zodiac Time Beast um, by revealing a grade three Zodiac Time Beast. So really it doesn't like, the first skill doesn't really help you because you'd only be able to reveal a Drastic Colossus to search out a Drastic Colossus. And I guess at that point you're thinning your deck, but Thinning your deck doesn't really matter in this deck uh, because that's not the goal. Um, so basically when it's in your hand, uh, you can discard it for stride and it gets plus two grade. So it's our stride fodder, our basic stride fodder for the deck. Uh, you need to stride in this deck. It's all about striding. So that's why we run four. Um, going on to our PG of the deck, uh, which I discussed a little bit earlier. Um, we have Steam Tamer Arca. Uh, this came out actually in the try three booster set, but it wasn't really useful back then. We didn't have a lot of Zodiac Time Beast cards to kind of capitalize on. Um, and so it wasn't really that good of a card because back then Time Loop was still um, the ruling king and master of Gear Chronicle deck this is being played. So it is a Zodiac Time Beast and it is a Gearroid. Uh, Gearroid part doesn't matter, but it does matter that it's a Zodiac Time Beast. Um, it has Sentinel. So you cannot run more than four Sentinels in your deck, which means uh, consisted of PGs and Quintet Walls. Um, then its second ability is the PG skill. It can just PG uh, for any of your units as long as you discard a Zodiac Time Beast. That is very important because uh, in this deck when you're PGing, you cannot discard uh, Prosepia Idea Drone and get away with the PG because it is not a Zodiac Time Beast. However, every other card in this deck is a Zodiac Time Beast, so you can discard any other card, just not uh, Idea Drone. So just use these to stride when you can, uh, uh, or they're just going to sit in your hand dead. Um, then uh, we have an activation still in the, uh, from the drop zone that says Generation Break 2. If you have two Arcas in your drop zone, you can choose one Arca and one Zodiac Time Beast trigger and bind them, and then you return one Arca, the other Arca, to your hand. So instead of going to the bottom like it does in most decks, um, it will just go back to your hand. So we only run three Arcas. Uh, the reason why is because our fourth Sentinel spot is filled by Pulsar Tamer Dagon. So this card is really, really good in my opinion because it allows you to guard for a bigger number. Um, it is a free uh, Quintet Wall, so most Quintet Walls are counter boss one. Uh, this unit does counter boss one, but it does also counter charge one. And then also all of your Zodiac Time Beast Guardians on the Guard Circle get 10,000 shield um, when it is on the Guard Circle. So you can also just, if you want to, just call this and then call a bunch of cards from your hand and they'll get 10k. Uh, which is obviously not better than a PG, but in the cases where it is are the cases where your opponent's attacking for really, really big and um, etc. But uh, its skill is during the battle that your Gear Colossus is attacked. Uh, this unit can counter boss one when placed on the guard circle from hand and we call five cards from the top of our deck to the uh, Guard circle and then if we have seven or more cards in our mind zone, we can counter charge one So it's not a bad card at all. I really like it um, It is another one of Zodiac time beasts that we can bind and get to Demir quick as well um, Then we have two Pulsar nibble rat. Uh, this is our, another one of our GBT 11 Zodiac time beasts that came out so as you guys can see in this set, a lot of Zodiac Time Beasts came out, so made this deck really, really consistent. Um, so its skills are 
Number one, it has a Generation Break 1 ability that activates the Bind Zone. You can counter boss one and bind the top card of your deck face up. At the beginning of the guard step that your Gear Colossus is attacked, uh, you may pay the cost, and if you do, call this card to Guard Circle. Uh, so it can just call itself to Guard Circle for the skill of counter boss one and binding the top card of your deck. Um, and then also when it's in your hand, you can bind this card face up and choose one of your Zodiac Time Beast Rear Guards and rest it and then draw a card. So we usually use that in the early game when we start with a Nibble Rat in our hand in the early game and we don't really need to use it for anything. Uh, no writing or anything, we just use its go. Then we have two Chrono Ethos Jackal. Uh, this is basically just a beater in our deck. Um, its only purpose is to attack. Um, its Generation Break 1 ability is when this unit attacks a Vanguard. If we have a Zodiac Time Beast on our Vanguard Circle, it also includes the Race of the Heart card. So, aka if we're on Drastic Colossus, we will always have a Zodiac Time Beast on our Vanguard. Um, and this unit gets plus 4,000 power, so it becomes an 11k attacker. So it's very solid. Then we run two Pulsar Bringhawk. Uh, Bringhawk is a, another Zodiac Time Beast that is actually there for the purpose of guarding. Kind of like um, our Nibble Rat. So, when this card is placed on Guard Circle, we can bind the top card of our deck. If that card is a Zodiac Time Beast, then we choose one of our Gear Colossuses. And, and it gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the battle. So, basically what that allows is you can play this card as a 10k guard, basically. Because uh, you're most of the time always going to check the top card of your deck, bind it, and it be a Zodiac Time Beast. But in the rare case that it's per Persepia Idea Drone, then it won't be, and that will be really crappy. But um, at least you got it out of your deck and you got it out of the way. Uh, still a very solid card. And then we actually run two starters um, of the starter that we run in this deck uh, because it's very important to the build and how everything centers around and works. So it has four runner like most starters which means it can move itself back when it's being ridden upon. Uh, the second ability is choose a grade three gear colossus from your hand and reveal it at the beginning of your ride phase and then if you do you can bind the top card of your deck. So what this allows is that you can ride a card on grade one you can't do it at um, cannot do it on grade one like before you ride because this card will be on the vanguard circle and it's a rear guard ability so be wary of that you do have to ride to grade one and then basically use its skill on uh, all the other turns so then it has an activation skill as well that is generation break one it says soul boss one and retire this unit if you have a gear colossus vanguard bind the top card of your deck and if that card is a zodiac time beast draw a card so i usually get this off the field as soon as i can like i get what I can out of it and then I use the skill to draw a card because mostly if you're fighting control in this meta you don't want it there so that your opponent can blow it up you just want to get rid of it. Then um, our triggers we run 8 critical, 2 stand, uh, 3 draw, wait sorry we run 7 yeah yeah we run 7 critical sorry I can't count my own build <laughs> but we run 7 critical, 2 stand, 3 draw and four heal. Uh, so basically we run a lot of different Zodiac Time Beasts here because of this is a Demiurg build. So we run uh, two Pulsar Slash Dog. That's uh, one of our new Zodiac Time Beast critical triggers that came out this set. We run three Chrono Volley Rabbit just because I like the art of this one. So that's why this one gets a three spot. Um, this one came out in the trial deck. And then we run two Pulsar Bush, uh, Rush Boar. Uh, this came out in GBT09, and this is another Zodiac Time Beast critical trigger. So all of our uh, crit triggers are vanilla. Moving on to our stand, our stand is actually has an ability uh, that says when it's placed on the rearguard circle or guardian circle, if we have a Gear Colossus or Zodiac Time Beast Vanguard, we can counter boss one. If we do, we draw a card and choose a card from our hand, bind it face up, and then soul charge one. This is just another card to help you get those specific binds off. Very good card. Then we run three draw triggers, uh, two Chrono Doze Sheep because it's awesome and it comes in uh, triple R foiling if you're able to get that. Also Chrono Volley Rabbit does as well. And then we also run one Pulsar Fickle Monkey. Uh, so Fickle Monkey is our other Zodiac Time Beast uh, trigger that's a draw trigger that came out in GBT11 as well. Then uh, for our heal triggers we run two Pulsar Tamer Anim which is a Zodiac Time Beast, the newer one from uh, this current set of uh, GBT11 and then we run two chronotherapy hamster which came out a while ago I believe in the trial deck um, so yeah the reason why we run so many different zodiac time beasts is because we want to have so many different time be uh, zodiac time beasts for our main card uh, deuce x machina demiurg so what demiurg does is 
choose 12 cards. Um, choose 12 face-up Zodiac Time Beast cards with different names from your bind zone, and you put them into the drop zone. Uh, so you return them to the playing field, basically. And then you choose 12 cards from your drop zone and put them on the top of your deck in any order. Now what this allows is for you to stack a bunch of triggers, get yourself stride fodder, do whatever you want with uh, stacking the cards from your drop zone on top of your deck. You can just stack any way you want. You can flex your opponent, make them think that you're going for like a triple critical. But really when they PG it, you could just be going for something else and then you could have the uh, criticals in there deeper in the stack. So it's, very, it's like a version of Tsukiyomi in my opinion where you just like extreme stack your deck. And then on top of that, until until the end of the turn, this unit gets a guard restrict ability that says when this unit attacks, until the end of the battle, your opponent cannot call grade one or greater cards from hand to guard circle. So your opponent cannot PG it. Um, like I said, it's gonna be really big because of drastic losses. So most of the time your opponent just dies to this because they cannot uh, have a consistent way to guard it. Um, moving on in our G zone, we have one meta pulsar mystery freeze dragon. This card came out this set, and it has the Generation Break 3 ability that says Counter Blast 2 and Shuffle your deck, and then you bind the top four cards of your deck. And during the turn, uh, until the end of the turn, um, during the battle that this unit attacks, your opponent cannot call cards from hand to guard circle with the same grades as those bound with this effect. So if you uh, bind a 0, 1, 2, and 3, they cannot guard the 0s, 1, 2s, or 3s, but they can G-Guardian. And also if a grade 3 was bound with this effect, this card gets plus 1 drive. So in the example that I just gave, you would get plus 1 drive if you bound a 0, 1, 2, and a 3. And they wouldn't be able to guard with anything but G-Guards. So very, very solid card if you um, are sure that the rest of your deck is like mainly triggers and that you can make good use of it. Ooh. Ooh, sorry guys, Ooh, really tired. All right, so moving on, we have four uh, Meta Pulsar Avenir Phoenix, or Avenir Phoenix, however you would like to pronounce it. Um, it is a card that we kind of rarely use in this deck, but it's there just in case. Um, when this unit attacks, you, we can counter boss one, choose a Avenir Phoenix and turn it face up in our G zone. Then we can reveal the top five cards of our deck and search, um, and for each card in our G zone that's face up, we can choose two Zodiac Time Beasts and uh, call them to separate rear guard circle and then put the rest on the bottom. So what this allows is this allows us to um, not only check top five and thin our deck uh, for triggers and whatnot, but it also allows us to call a board if we don't have one. Yeah, so allows us to call a board if we don't have one. It also has a Generation Break 3 ability that says all of your Zodiac Time Beasts uh, rear guards get plus 2,000. So it makes them able to hit too if you end up calling some weak cards off of it. Uh, but we mostly don't go into that. We mostly go into Alter Dragon until it's time for Demiurg. Uh, so what Alter Dragon does is it has two abilities. The first one is a continuous ability that says the cost for this card stride may be also paid with a counter boss one and a gear colossus or a zodiac time beast bind from your hand. So you can counter boss one and bind any zodiac time beast uh, or, zero or, or gear colossus card from your hand and uh, bind it. And then if you do, um, you can just stride this card. And then it has an axe skill that says choose a face down card from your G zone, turn it face up. And if you do, you look at the top five cards of your deck, search for up to two cards from among them, bind them face up, shuffle your deck, and this unit gets plus 2,000 power for each card in your bind zone. And then if the number of cards in your bind zone is five or more, then you counter charge one. So basically with Alter Dragon, it gets our bind zone stack going for Demiurg, and we also just flip Split Pegasus for its skill. We never use uh, Split Pegasus' second skill, uh, which allows us to call Zodiac Time Beast to the field, but we use it for the first skill that says when it's face up in the G zone, um, all Zodiac Time Beasts in your front row get plus f uh, 1,000 power. So you can basically use Alter Dragon twice, and then for the rest of the game, all of your Zodiac Time Beasts in the front row will get 2k continuously. Um, so it's very, very good. Then uh, moving on to our G-Guardians, we have five G-Guardians as usual. Uh, we have one far away time made in Urlu. Uh, so what this Urlu does is it's our Fighter's Collection flip G-Guard that says counter boss one and flip a G-Guardian from your G-Zone face up. And then if this card is placed on guard circle, we can counter boss one and uh, flip. And then if you do, this unit gets plus 5,000 shield for every face up card in your G-Zone. So usually when you're using this card, it is a no pass unless you're using it like immediately after first stride or something like that and there would be no reason for you to do that unless your opponent's attacking you for a super big number that you need to guard that early um 
But other than that, there's not really a time where you're using it super early. So most of the time when you're using it late, it's like always a no pass. Uh, then we have two retroactive time made in Urlu. Uh, so this is a G Guardian that it, when placed on the guard circle, choose up to one normal unit and one trigger unit from our drop zone, put them on the bottom of the deck in any order. And if you put two cards, then it gets plus 5,000 shield. So it becomes a 31K generic G Guardian. Uh, then we run two air element loop torm, which allows us to discard one card and draw one card uh, when you place it on the guard circle. So it allows us to filter out our hand a little more, get the card we want um, and that we need instead of the ones that our deck just randomly gives us. Um, however, you might get another card that you don't really need, but it's uh, better to have it than not to have the option to do it. So moving on into our games. I'm going to have to see what I named the games really quick. Um, Alright, so starting with Demiurg Game 1. Uh, we're playing actually against New Messiahs. So uh, like I've said in my previous videos, the Link Joker set is live. So there are a lot of people playing Link Joker online. So it's kind of like a good test as well to uh, be able to see if, um, if you can do it. So I actually, uh, I actually used my starter skill on accident, so I just put it back to the deck because that would have been my drive check, and my opponent was fine with it. So um, my opponent attacks me and crits me, then I use the actual skill to reveal and uh, play cards, and then I bind a Zodiac Time Beast Stride Fodder, so I use Nibble Rat to do the same thing, and I really need a Drastic Colossus right about now. So I attack on my Vanguard, I uh, get a crit trigger, and I put all the power on my rear guard. So we're doing heavy damage in the early game. Our opponent tries to uh, rush us back, and he does check a heal trigger, which makes his rush kind of successful. Um, and so we reveal and bind, and then we ride for Sepia Idea Drone. Uh, then we stride into Alter Dragon. Uh, we use Alter Dragon skill to flip up a split Pegasus, and then we choose a Drastic Colossus and a Valve uh, from our Bind Zone, or from our uh, deck top five cards and put into the Bind Zone. Uh, then we're using both skills of our starters so that we don't have to get caught in a situation where we're locked up and uh, they won't let us out. Uh, points to you if you get that reference, because <laughs> I didn't even mean to say that. But uh, our opponent G guards when we attack him. Uh, then he chooses to just take it back in no guard. Uh, we do check a critical trigger, and uh, it would have been over had we double crit him, but not really because he double heals here. So I'm like, wow, so good. Uh, but at the end phase, we use the skill of Prosephia to counter boss one, uh, bind a card from our drop zone, and then uh, we soul charge one. And since. Uh... Oh. Yeah, since we bound one, he was supposed to put one to the bottom, but I guess I just didn't call it on him. So, yeah, I guess we'll just forget about that one. Um, I don't know what I was thinking then. I was probably really late and it was t I was tired. Um, but he goes into Amnesty, swing with Amnesty without a crit. Um, he gets into a PG, a Sacrifice Messiah, and another one of his grade 2. So we're able to just take his attacks quite peacefully here. We also heal... Um, on our fourth damage, which makes us go back to three. We use the skill of Alter to counter boss one and bind our uh, draw trigger since we don't have a Stride Fighter in our hand. And then out of the top five cards, we choose the Stand, the stand and the Crit to uh, bind them. And Alter Dragon gets all the power uh, from its own skill. We also play a Jackal to the rear guard circle. Um, and then we play a Tiger to counter boss one and rest and we bind a valve laser and since this is a zodiac time beast we draw so we attack for 50 he pgs it um we check three cards uh none of them are the card that we want or desire so we attack his rear guard with the 10k we use the skill of prosephia to um bind one soul charge one and bind one from the field And that's why we didn't do it last turn, actually, because uh, because we didn't have any rear guards. So yeah, I was actually I pulled a smart move. <laughs> so 
so he's actually locking a bunch of our cards with the Messiah skill. Uh, he's using the skill of his PG to bind it from the drop zone, and he can... I'm not sure if... Uh, or... Yeah, he doesn't have to bind two cards because uh, these great twos cannot be locked by card effects, so... It's very good, in, not only in the Messiah Mirror match, but um, otherwise as well, to use effects that would make you lock. Um, so he checks a draw trigger and a crit trigger. I let him get one attack through, and then I PG the other one that has a crit. So I ride Drastic Colossus, and I stride, uh, because I'm pretty sure I want to go into Demiurg this turn. And I use Drastic Skill to draw a card and bind a card for my hand. And I bind Slash Dog. Um, and then Demiur gets, uh, goes up to 42k, and at this point, uh, this is just where he quit the game, honestly. Uh, but we use uh, Valve Laser Dragon to counter boss one, soul boss one, and call it to the field. Um, so we call both uh, Valve Laser Dragons. Oh, and our opponent actually didn't leave the game yet, so this is not that game, I think. Or it might be, but maybe it's just not yet. I should start leaving a note for myself in the comments when my opponent left the game so I know what I'm talking about. Um, so using Demiurg to put five different Zodiac Time Beasts um, back into the drop zone from our bind zone and then we choose uh, cards from the top of our deck. And I think it's during this part that he left because he doesn't have a PG in his hand. Uh, even if he did, he wouldn't be able to guard Demiurge with it. And then he has a G-Guard in his hand, but it's not going to guard for very much, considering all the requirements for his G-Guardian are, are not currently met. So uh, we actually put the cards that we chose into our bind zone, um, because after he quit, we wanted to see... <laughs> I wanted to see how things would have worked out. Uh, so I put cards on the top of the deck. And I think it was while I was deciding that he actually left, because a lot of people, uh, if they know they're, they're going to die, quote unquote, they don't really spend time waiting around um, for you to finish them off, they just leave. So... Yeah. Uh, so... When I did the order, I kind of like messed up a little bit, when I put like a draw trigger, like, to draw one of the normal units, but... It wasn't really that much of a mistake. Um, I should have just saved it for the defensive turn though. Um, so I end up putting a card back. I end up putting the draw trigger on the top. Uh, so I attack um, and get a stand trigger, a crit trigger, and a crit trigger. Uh, so actually the draw went to the bottom. And then he doesn't take any damage uh, because he's already left the game. But I just basically continued on to show you guys what that would have looked like. Um, should you guys have been interested in that turn. Of course, you will get two more games here to showcase what that looks like, but um, yeah. So starting with game two, we're going to be loading up here. Uh, game two, we're playing against a Deep Police player, uh, specifically Dimensional Robo, which is pretty interesting, honestly. You almost like see never, uh, you don't see any of them uh, these days, but we're able to draw into a Drastic Colossus, so that's pretty amazing. Uh, we attack and drive check, he checks a heal, uh, he rides a 10k vanilla, and then he uses Goyusha skill to shove all of his cards into the soul and ride a grade 3. So not only does he ride the grade 3 that he ideally wants to ride, but he does get the 3 before us, so he's going to be on uh, 3 for 2 turns. Uh, we use the skill of our starter to bind the top card. We play Manish and uh, the other card. So these are still able to pretty much hit Vanguard except for Manish. Um, so it's pretty good in that respect. Then he attacks our Vanguard for 20. We no guard. He checks a PG and a die jet. So again, I'm safe from lots of damage. Um, we go into Drastic Colossus and discard a card. Um, and then we discard a card and select top three. Uh, we will put the Rewind Tiger in the bind zone, uh, the Jackal in our hand, and the Stride Fodder to the drop zone. And then we're um, also doing Drastic Skill to draw one and bind one. 
we check the top five cards uh, for cards to bind. We end up binding a Drastic Colossus and a ZTV Stride Fodder. And then our Vanguard goes up to 42k. We use the Starter Scope to bind the top card since it is a Gear Chronicle uh, Zodiac Time Beast. So we do draw a card. We use Noble Rat Skill to kind of boss one um, and rest a unit so that we can call it out. Uh, we attack Vanguard, we check a heal trigger, power goes off to Manish, and that's about it. Um, our opponent does check a draw trigger, but we are still able to swing at him and make him drop some guard because of Manish's ability, and Manish binds itself at the end of the attack for its own ability. Uh, and then we have the, our opponent going to Die Earth. Uh, so Die Earth calls out a Die Jet and a Shadow Kaiser, surprisingly enough. He seems to be running like an old school build of Deep Police with Strides included, so I would not, um, I don't know. I don't think this deck's bad. Uh, it definitely can fight this deck. It's just that you have to get kind of lucky with checking grade 3s and stuff like that. Um, and then he uses Digest skill to send a grade 3 back to the deck. And I was telling him that he sent back a draw trigger as well, but I just had to stop worrying about it. Whew. And then he plays uh, two Wilkings to the rearguard circle, which is not really going to help him in this scenario. Um, I was honestly just very happy that he didn't have a Laurel in his hand so soon. So he checks three cards, and uh, he checks two grade threes and one PG. So I know now that like his hand's pretty weak, even though it looks strong. So we stride for turn uh, by counterblasting one and binding a unit, and then we use Alter Dragon skill. Uh, check top five, and we're binding two of our cards, uh, Valve Laser and um, our Bring Bring Hawk. And then we counter charge one, and it goes up to 63. We use the skill to bind the top card, draw a card, and we draw a PG off of that, so that's pretty uh, freaking solid, if I do say so myself. Our opponent PGs us, and we do check a critical, so thankfully for our opponent, they guarded, because uh, they would have died for it. And then we attack for 15, and then he no guards the last attack, so even though he has the cards to guard it, I assume he no guards because he doesn't want to fight this anymore. And he, like, next turn we would have been able to do the Dimir. Um, so unless he would have, was able to kill me in the next turn, uh, which he would have, uh, or maybe would have been able to done, uh, have done, if he had used the Limit Break uh, combo of D-Robo. So I guess he just didn't want to continue on, so he just ended up uh, taking his 6 damage. Uh, so then he offers us a rematch, and we, of course, always accept our rematches that are given. Uh, so he rides, we ride. This time uh, we get like a really good hand. We start off with the second starter in our hand. Like our hand's almost perfectly set up, actually. And it's really disgusting. Um, so we ride a Valve Pulsar or a Valve Laser Dragon. We bind the top two. We use the skill of Rewind Tiger to bind and draw. Unfortunately, we always freaking draw a draw trigger somehow. It's freaking heinous. So uh, we attack for 11 into Vanguard. He takes it and we crit him, so he's at 4 damage. Uh, we guard with a 10k uh, to his attack. Then we reveal at the beginning of the battle phase. We bind 2. And then we ride into Gla uh, Drastic Colossus to discard a card. Uh, and choose three, one goes to the bind zone, one goes to the hand, and one goes to the drop zone. Uh, so then we attack him for Vanguard, he no guards Vanguard. We do check a heal trigger and a draw trigger. Uh, we draw. Then he attacks for 14 to our rear guard, letting us stay on grade 3 for another, yet another turn. Um, so here we're able to just Reveal, bind the top two, bind a stand trigger and a glass, uh, drastic colossus. Then we play Lugal Ur to use the skill to rest a card draw. Then we attack for 11 to his vanguard. He has to block this unless he wants to die. Uh, so we attack him for 16 and he no passes it. 
However, we do check the critical, which doesn't do anything because uh, it's not nearly enough power. Uh, so then he goes into Die Earth again, as he did last game, and calls Shadow Kaiser and Die Jet. He has to use um, Die Jet Skill to get a grade 3 back into his deck, and then he attacks our Vanguard. Um, or he actually attacks our rear guard with his uh, vanguard and then I actually no guard it because I'm pretty sure I no guarded it actually I G guarded it um, oh yeah yeah so this is the play where I did double G guardian so I double G guarded it um, so that it would be a two or three to pass uh, or no pass it's actually no pass so he checks a heal and a crit uh, giving all power to Shadow Kaiser. He attacks 16 to our rear guard, and then our vanguard is attacked for two crit uh, with 25k. We draw and then we bind the top two thanks to the starter. Uh, and then I started thinking, so I'm taking a moment to think here. It seems. Um, so I go into Alter Dragon here. Uh, I use the skill to draw a card, bind a card. And then uh, Alter uses its skill to flip one face up and then check the top five cards of the deck and bind two. So we bind two, um, one Tiger, one Jackal. And then our Vanguard gets massive power. Uh, we use the skill of our re Rewind Tiger. Unfortunately, we Soul Charge uh, Persepia, or we bind Persepia, so hopefully we won't have to um, deal with making that card make our draws bad and stuff like that. Uh, so right here, he draws for turn, or sorry, uh, it's still my turn, actually. I'm just moving, I guess, kind of slow because maybe I was thinking. We use the Sand Trigger skill uh, to be a boost for the Tiger. We attack for 12k, uh, he does take that one. And then we attack for 69, he PGs. And I check a critical trigger, putting um, all the effects on Lugal Ur, and another critical trigger, all effects on Lugal Ur. So then he G guards um, the attack, and we pass turn back over to him. Uh, he cannot stride, so that's very good on us. Uh, so I think he's thinking right now, or deciding <sighs> what it is he would like to do. Um, so he decides to get rid of Laurel to play a grade 1 booster. Um, I'm not really all that sure why he did that, because it's kind of like a minus for no reason. Um, but he uses Die Jet to send uh, his grade 3 back, and then uh, he's putting 4 cards into the soul with Goyusha ability to re-ride into the break ride, and then he's using uh, 4 cards again uh, with Goyusha in order to shout to the soul and ride the legion and break ride the legion. Because uh, he knew that he had no other chance, basically. Um, so he used the Break Ride skill. <coughs> yeah, so he uses the Break Ride skill. He's going into Legion, returning three crits, or actually all four crits. I thought he was going to return some great threes, to be honest, because that seems like the most important thing to check with uh, these abilities in D Robo. They're very dangerous if they check great threes. Uh, so he's shuffling, and his vanguard has three crits, and breaks two guard per every grade three check. Uh, then he plays the 4k uh, booster of Commander Laurel. We get attacked for 27, so we G guard number one for uh, 41. And then we also PG simultaneously, so that he has to check at least one grade three to pop both of those. And then essentially I was sitting at a one to pass here, so 
I just did what I do and I guarded with um, a good amount of my units after that to make uh, 21, 31, 41, to 51. So now he has to check two grade threes or a grade three and a trigger to get past me. Um, I told him to go ahead. He checks a critical trigger, puts all to Vanguard, and then checks a draw trigger. Thank goodness uh, wasn't a grade three because I would have lost. Uh, then we stride into Demiurg. We use the skill to draw and bind. And then Demiurg gets all the power. Um, so we're using Demiurg skill. Now our opponent mentioned how we're almost decked out, which is kind of funny considering that he doesn't seem to know what this deck does or something like that. Uh, but we put back 12 different Zodiac Time Beasts into the drop. And then we rearrange any way we want to um, all the rest of the cards. So we can choose 12 from our drop zone and put it back to our deck in any order. So we're basically just nabbing all the triggers and the stride fodders uh, so that we can be sure to have stride fodders when the time comes. Um, so I end up putting, uh, start putting the cards to the top of the deck. Uh, he can't really guard because the only card in his hand that is really guard worthy is his PG. And Demiurg says you can't attack with, uh, with grade ones or higher. So we attacked for 11k to his vanguard. Um, he guards it with a draw trigger and then we attack with Demiurg. Check a crit, critical power, check a crit, critical power, and then check the stand to stand our rear guard. So he checks a heal, uh, that's heal one. And then his second check is and third check are not heals. Uh, so that ends up being GG, and that is the game. Um, and with that being said, that has been our Demir Zodiac Time Beast deck. I really hope you guys enjoyed um, the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, um, hit the like button, and comment down in the comment section below letting me know what you thought of the video. Um, with that, that will wrap up our GBT11 future fight. So next we are moving on to GBT12. For those of you who have been waiting for that, we're on the current set of GBT12. So that should be exciting for you guys. Um, and with that being said, uh, be sure to check out, uh, I almost forgot, check out our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. Uh, for those of you who support me on Patreon, thank you so much. Uh, you guys mean so much to me, what you guys are doing for my life, and uh, allowing the uh, channel to be supported just even a little bit more by any number that you uh, s give to support. <laughs> so with that being said, um, it has been Josh from Cardfight Empire. I'm going to go take a nap, and I'll see you guys on the next video.